our scripture reading for the first Sunday of Christmas is Isaiah 9, verses 2 and 6. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Why did they have to choose December 25th? I asked the question as I watched snow piling up on the van already packed for the trip across the mountains to celebrate Christmas with my family. How could the church fathers do this to us? They assign Christmas in a month where ice and snow happen. They set a holiday that, in our time at least, has to be observed with extra gatherings and concerts, precisely when our bodies are telling us, hibernate. To celebrate the birth of Christ, the early church chose what was, at the time, the winter equinox, the shortest day of the year, December 25th. They decided to gather on the darkest day of the year to welcome the coming of the light into the world. They did well. The bleak midwinter is a good time to hear this truth about the Christ. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. A German friend invited our family over to her home to watch the lighting of the Christmas tree. She had attached sparklers to each limb. The children squealed with delight. The next time I read John 8, the happy Christmas memory came vividly to mind. When Jesus says, I am the light of the world, he uses a word that can be translated light or fire. Jesus is the fire of the world. Jesus is the energy of the world. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He is less like a bulb attached to a power source than he is like a candle or a sparkler. He doesn't come on and off when we press a button. Jesus Christ is a living person who reveals himself to us. It takes time to take him in, just as it takes a lifetime to understand a spouse or long-time friend. In Exodus 4, God speaks out of the burning bush, Moses, Moses, and Moses says, here I am. Then God says, come no closer, remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Moses asks to know God's name. God answers, I am who I am. To receive the light of the world. You have to turn aside. You have to take the sandals off your feet. This is holy ground. You have to bow in awe before the tremendous mystery. Take time to walk out on a clear winter evening and take in the wonder of the night sky. 
some of what we call stars are actually planets. Like the moon, they reflect the light of the sun. They are glorious, to be sure. But the stars that twinkle are true stars, shining their way across light years to reach us. Jesus Christ does not reflect the light of God. The very being of the Godhead shines from his very being. And the same is true of those whom he draws to himself in the sacrament of baptism. Reflecting the light of God is a good thing for us to do. We can read the Bible and try to be like the one we see presented there. But the higher good is to receive the light within through faith. In baptism, we are born of God. In faith, we receive the life of the Son of God. We are given power to become children of God. The darkness may be strong in the world around us, but the darkness is no longer strong within. We are begotten of God. We are children of the light. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. Now to God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen.